Guys, tonight is going to be a very special night and um, I believe the Lord's going to do some wonderful things. Before I uh, bring these powerful men of God um, on the scene, the Lord has been really blessing our team and blessing our church with a lot of spiritual manifestations taking place in our church. And these men that you're going to hear about tonight are also the ones that the Lord is using. Not only them, there's many more, but we're just going to highlight a few. These guys are live streaming, you know, Wednesday, Pastor Ilya, um, Ivan is live streaming on Fridays and Pastor Rickard is streaming on Saturdays. And then on Sundays we are sharing our services. So today you get a chance to meet them. And not only that, I'm going to ask you that you guys subscribe to them and that you join their chats as well when they live stream so that you can grow spiritually. They are very uniquely gifted and I believe that today is going to be a powerful dynamic time. So um, we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and introduce them. The Pastor Ilya is to my uh, right or left. Um, and then we have Ivan and Hello. then we have Pastor Rickard. And so let's just start from the beginning guys. Uh, start with your name, a um, little bit about who you are, how you came to know Christ and how long you've been with Hungry Jan. And then we'll just go from there. If we can go with from Ilya to uh, Rickard and Ivan. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Pastor Ilya. Um, I am a PK kid, pastor's kid. I grew up in church. Um, and um, my life, uh, is, beginning of my life is very interesting. Uh, I uh, was part of the, my family is a missionary's family, so grew up on the missionary's field. Uh, but we grew up um, very poor, and, and uh, as missionaries, we were barely surviving the salary that we were receiving and then helping with the rest of the, uh, the people that are around and building the church. So uh, when it came time, uh, when I was a teenager, uh, I didn't want to be part of the ministry because I associated ministry with poverty. When And then once we moved to the United States, I kind of got into the business. But uh, the Lord had different idea for me. And it took me a while to hear the Lord and the Lord had to do some breaking and and really deal with my heart, deal with certain fears, dealing with certain mindsets. Um, and uh, now I am here, I'm in the ministry, uh, but um, together with Pastor Vlad in the beginning was in the ministry, was part of the Hungry Gen uh, and was serving alongside while I was still trying to figure out if I want to be in the ministry or not, ironically as that sounds. But uh, like I said, the Lord had different plans for me and uh, thank God that I yielded to those plans, yielded into God's hands. And today I'm enjoying life with uh, my wife, Mariana, and three beautiful daughters, serving the Lord, serving God's kingdom, serving alone with Pastor Vlad at Hungry Gin. And yeah, that's my life story in short. Ilya has been uh, since the beginning. Well, not since the beginning. I've been there since the beginning. He was there even before me. So um, in the sense that their ministry, his father is the pastor of our church. Um, he, I call him the pastor. He's the founding pastor and so Ilya has always been there and just a powerful man of God. The Lord uses him powerfully. Yesterday um, he's already been streaming from his studio. So where he's coming from, uh, from his studio. So guys make sure that you're um, shameless plug. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you follow and uh, I believe that you will be really blessed. Um, Rickard. Yes, sir. Uh, Rickard is my name. I'm the newest part of the team here. I've only been part of Hungry Gen for uh, roughly four years or four and a half years now. And three years out of those, I was in the European wilderness, uh, <laughs> struggling with uh, with immigration documents and so on. But yeah, uh, grew up a pastor's kid as well, but left the faith as a as a teenager. Uh, came back to Jesus. My my dad used anointing oil from TB Joshua. <laughs> I was going I was going down the down the, the 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 path of least resistance, I suppose. And my dad was using anointing oil from TB Joshua on my pillow. Prayed for it and said, "Every spirit of the world is is pulling my my son away from from God. Uh, I command you to to leave my son uh, alone." And uh, after that, shortly after that. The passion in my heart just reignited from nowhere. 
Uh, wow. I started coming back to church again. I got a passion. I, I sold my worldly things and, and, and came back to church. And just a year uh, and a half after that, I traveled to Nigeria to Prophet T.B. Joshua, where it all started. And uh, I stayed there as a disciple for nine years, learning from him and, and under him uh, for, uh, you know, seeing incredible miracles, signs and wonders. My faith was severely shaken at its core forever and ever from that time, you know, seeing such incredible miracles, healings and deliverances happening there in the jungles of Africa. And then I, I came back, uh, met my wife, Brittany, who's who's been part of the Hungry Gen team for a long time. I came to Hungry Gen and uh, I mean, I, I, I got sold out on the vision and mission instantly. Uh, I went from from uh, living uh, under, I, I, I would say, the best place in Africa, in my opinion. I might be biased, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, and, and back to the best place in America. I might be biased again, but yeah. <laughs> You're not biased. You're correct. <laughs> Come on, so, yeah, that's, that's my story. <laughs> uh, I'm here serving gladly together with these great men of God, and I'm so excited for what the future has. Come on, come on. And Rickard is married and Rickard is expecting a baby. Yeah, I am. Three months from now, I'm going to be a dad. Come on. come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. Rickard is a powerful man of God. He's a um, he's like a, a sword in the hands of God. If, if you guys um, ever hear Rickard praying, um, you know, if I would have been a demon, I would be I would be scared <laughs> stuff. So he's he's a really really dynamic leader very very passionate and uh, we're really really glad to have him on our team and you know he spent years being trained by and trained in the ministry of prophet tb joshua i mean a decade and so it's just it's really glad to have him uh with us and he live streams every w saturday and so that does digital deliverance and hungry gen and so god uses him powerfully make sure that you guys subscribe to his channel as well and then um ivan Bro, are you, you there? Tell us more about yourself and yeah. what, what's happening with you. Yeah, my name is Ivan. I've been with Hungry Gen for about six years. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I was born in a Christian family. Uh, my parents took me to church from a young age, but um, I didn't like church growing up. I mean, church seemed to be boring. I slept in church. Uh, it was The church wasn't the problem. It's just I didn't see God. I didn't see God the way it was in the Bible. And so to me, uh, God was, I mean, church was religion. There was no problem with churches. Just I didn't have an encounter. And so at the age of 16, 17, and 18, um, I had an encounter with the Lord. Mm -hmm. A friend invited me to a youth service, and it was like a Friday youth service. God encountered me at the altar. And I experienced the presence of God. And and you know how the Bible says, taste and see that God is good. Mm -hmm. I tasted God for the first time in my life. And I'm like, wow, God is so amazing. And that was the beginning of my pursuit uh, towards the Lord. And uh, I lived in, in Cali at that time. So I was part of this one church and I grew, you know, God baptized me in the Holy Spirit and, and, and many other things happened. But, uh, but, you know, continuing to reading the Bible, you know, when you read the Bible, you see the Bible is filled with supernatural. And then, you know, you look at the church and you don't see that supernatural in the church. So there was a hunger on the inside of me, you know, like, God, you know, you're, there's supernatural from the very beginning all the way to the end. Where is the disconnect? Where is that uh, mm -hmm. missing link? And so I believe, you know, uh, God placed like a little hunger within me, you know, to... Uh, to kind of pursue that, you know, I started reading books, different books, and that was kind of like my journey. And then just a little bit about how I, I came to Hungry Gen was um, I came across a podcast uh, of Pastor Vlad. I mean, he was preaching back then. It was, I don't know, it was probably 10, 15 years ago. I don't remember exactly when, but Pastor Vlad was preaching on, like, you know, getting on the right bus, dancing around the cow. Um, you know, HD. <laughs> we HGTV. deleted those from YouTube, guys. This is a <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. But but when I came across it, you know, I I right away noticed that there was something special, especially on Pastor Vlad, like the anointing over him. I'm like, man, God's gonna use him powerfully. And um, and we invited Pastor Vlad to our youth youth conference back then, and and 
long story short, you know, we, we made visits here to Hungry Gen and then uh, we made a decision to let's sell our house and move to Hungry Gen. And, and we've, we've, we're here now and, um, how long has uh, it been now? About six, six, maybe going on to seven years. Come on. Um, so here we've been uh, doing evangelism with interns. We've been going on mission trips, being a part of the pastoral team, uh, just ministering in the capacities that God graced us in. So that's Come just on. a little bit about me. Ivan, Ivan is our healer, not in a real <laughs> literal sense healer. He doesn't heal, but uh, we, we bring sick cases to Ivan. Ivan is the... Um, Ilya is the prophet, um, uh, Rickard is the demon guy, and then Ivan is the sickness guy. <laughs> so uh, so we have great a great combo if you ask me. Come on, somebody. So we got you covered. If you ever, guys, if you ever come to Hungry Gen, uh, whatever problem that you have, we have a department for it. And so, um, but when it comes to a lot of people see Hungry Gen as a place where spiritual manifestations take place and um, we are a local church, we are local pastors, leaders and so we will speak today not as just some um, YouTube um, spiritual fanatics or some Facebook spiritual junkies but people that actually are grounded in the local church, people that love the Bible, people that love discipleship, people that love that and who also believe the supernatural gifts should be operating in the church. I'm going to read the verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 through 6 and then we're going to jump in. Uh, there are diversity of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all. And Paul seems to ins insinuate that there are diversity of gifts, ministries and activities. We see the Spirit, the Lord and the same God. And so we see that that are gifts of the Holy Spirit. We see there are ministries of Jesus, the gifts of Jesus. These are fivefold ministries. And then there is activities of the Father. Uh, these are the, the gifts from the Father. They are more of gifts that all the humans have. Um, every we call them talents sometimes leadership gifts being able to teach um, you know charity and some other things that you don't have to be a Christian to have that and then there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit they seem to belong to all the Christians and then there are gifts of Jesus and they are offices of ministry that they belong to particular people that Jesus chooses and so we're going to dive in today about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I do believe that spiritual gifts are for today. We are not cessationists that believe that they have ended with the apostles and we're not going to talk about that today because that is, there's another video, a lot of them that we've done, I've done before. But today we're going to talk about how to walk in them. What are those spiritual gifts? How do you know you have them? Uh, have you, can you lose a spiritual gift? Do non-Christians have spiritual gifts? And so if you have other questions, you can feel free to drop that below as well. We're going to try to attend to those questions at the end. Um, so guys, first of all, what are the spiritual gifts and where are they found in the Bible? Yeah, if no one is going to talk, I guess I can jump in here. So as you said, Pastor, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 is where most of the, the these gifts are categorized. I actually, I, I kind of think that these gifts are referring to almost like the three gifts of deliverance, three gifts of healing, three gifts of, of prophetic, but that's not a doctrine or anything. I'm just, just talking that um, three of them are the gifts of revelation, three of them are the gifts of inspiration, and three of them are the gifts of power and mm -hmm. and they can be found in in first corinthians 12 word of wisdom word of knowledge and discerning of spirits being the gifts of revelation prophecy uh, gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues being the gifts of in inspiration and then faith healing and working of miracles being the gifts of power and that's one of the many bible or, or well the main bible verse that talks about the gifts of the spirit in this sense mm -hmm. Any of you guys have anything else uh, to add to that? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 says this, To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge, by mean of the same Spirit, to another faith, 
by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit to another miraculous power to another prophecy to another distinguishing between spirits to another speaking in different kind of tongues and still to another the interpretation of tongues that's in first mm -hmm. corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. Mm -hmm. the none of them mention about the gift of deliverance mm -hmm. and Richard, i want to uh, <laughs> highlight that a lot of people think mm -hmm. that that it is, even though it is a spiritual enablement, it is the anointing of yeah. the Holy Spirit, but we don't see that deliverance is actually the gift of the Holy Spirit. No, yeah, many people used to ask me, and, and uh, they ask in the context that, or am I anointed? Do I have the gift of deliverance? Can you activate the gift of deliverance in my life? And uh, we have been looking into scripture, and the only way that I can explain it is that deliverance isn't part of the gifts of the Spirit, although many of the gifts of the Spirit will help you in the ministry of deliverance, such as discernment of spirits, uh, words of wisdom, or, or knowledge sometimes of like where the root cause of different kind of spiritual afflictions come from. But the, the, the deliverance, the ministry of deliverance itself isn't a gift of the Spirit. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. It's not part of the fivefold ministry. It's simply our assignment as Christians, which mm -hmm. to me says that every single Christian should be able and ready to cast devils out of people if the situation arises. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of, yeah, you know, my passion as well, that mm -hmm. uh, to equipping the saints to, to uh, give people the tools, give Christians the tools they need mm -hmm. to be able to effectively cast demons out. So no, I, I would say deliverance isn't part of the gifts of the spirit. Rather, it's our assignment mm -hmm. and our duty as Christian soldiers to accomplish. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Ilya, that in a uh, gift of prophecy is mentioned in all three when it refers to the gift of prophecy the office of a prophet and then when it talks about the gifts of the father in Romans it actually Romans chapter 12 verses 6 through 8 it says having then uh, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry let us use it in our ministering he who teaches in teaching he who exhorts in exhortation he who gives with liberal liberality and he who leads with diligence he who shows mercy with cheerfulness it's almost like in all three segments there is a prophetic in all three both in jesus giving us offices of prophet um, the Holy Spirit giving the gifts of prophecies and a lot of people mix that up and think actually that um, if you prophesy that makes you an automatic prophet or that if you are able to uh, give one more knowledge or give a prophetic word that automatically makes you a prophet. Can you speak into that? Yes, yes. It's a, a First of all, uh, the fact that it's mentioned uh, in all three or it's given by all three but the, by the Father, by the Son and the Holy Spirit to shows the importance of of that gift uh, in our in our lives, and Apostle Paul says that um, you should all or you should all desire to prophesy um, that 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 gift is very important, especially in the church and and for the Christian. But just because you can um, deliver a prophetic word or speak a prophetic word, that does not make you a prophet. Prophet is somebody that. Uh, to be a prophet or to be in the office of a prophet is not something that you should uh, even desire because that's something that Jesus himself in his sovereign will appoints. But all of us should desire to operate in the gifts uh, of prophecy and should desire to prophesy. Just because you can deliver a prophetic word um, and it's accurate, uh, that doesn't make you a prophet. That just makes you somebody who is enabled by the Spirit of God, by the gift of God, to uh, to, to to prophesy. So they're not uh, one and the same. And um, I believe personally that people that are that are born as uh, with the gift of the Father, a gift of pro uh, a, a gift of prophecy. That's why it explains that some of even people that uh, from their birth, not even Christians, have an ability to uh you know they call deja vu or 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 they foresee certain things that they come to pass it's just a inability from the father um that they were uh given despite of even uh them being a believer of course if you be if they become believer that gift becomes even that that much further enabled and used for 
good, but just because you prophesy does not um, make you a prophet. I would even go as far as to say just because you are called to be a prophet, mm. that doesn't mean that you need to be uh, putting a, a prophet on your Facebook or Instagram in front of your name because it takes time to walk into that calling mm -hmm. and operate in that calling. Just because you're called to be a prophet, apostle, uh, teacher, evangelist, or pastor, it doesn't necessarily mean you are already walking in that mental, in that calling. Sometimes it takes years to develop and 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 walk into that uh, call of Jesus in your life. And it's interesting what Ilya just highlighted. Called, that's the difference between the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of Jesus of fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry is not necessarily given to you it's you're called into it the the gifts of the holy spirit it's not that it's the holy spirit gifts them he releases he activates that and so you can't call yourself a prophet you have to be called into a prophetic um, mm, office you can't call yourself a pastor now of course nowadays Absolutely. you can do whatever you want but that's not how that works Jesus calls you to be a pastor and then there's usually other pastors who would acknowledge that and who would uh, confirm that call and even then I like what you highlighted is that just because you were called and you were confirmed there is still that proper there is still that proper time when your calling and your confirmation it gets acknowledged it gets it, it, it gets revealed or manifested to the world to the rest of the world to the rest of the public because we have right now a lot of people who feel like that just because you know they got into a place of um, oh well you know my, my uh, I got ordained into it or I got called into it. like for example I was called at the age of 16 to be a pastor I didn't call myself a pastor until like 26 or 27 even though I was leading that because I was being matured and I was growing into that and so a lot of people fall in love more with their titles than the anointing and the office that God carries for them uh, versus just walking around and uh, labeling you know and throwing out labels and all of this stuff and so now we'll leave a little bit about this the the office of ministry and um, come back to the spiritual gifts. What are the differences between spiritual gifts and natural talents? Uh, I think first starts. Okay, Ilya, go ahead. Go ahead Sorry, Rickard. No, you go. You are the more <laughs> you are you are the more equipped when it comes to this. Go for it, bro. <laughs> well, I, I think first we have to go back to the uh, to the scriptural. Um, understanding of it is that uh, natural talents are the gifts of the father and uh, the gifts of the the gifts of the spirit are the gifts uh, uh, that is given uh, by uh, by the spirit it, it's a spiritual un, uh, unablement it's not it's supernatural it's not something that comes out of our natural strengths uh, not uh, doesn't come out of our uh, of our natural uh, abilities and it's something that you receive versus, uh, versus natural talent is something that you um, learn to uh, you learn to uh, develop, you learn to master. Even though the gifts of the spirit is something that you also need to master, but it's not uh, it's not a natural uh, it's not a natural ability. Do you have anything else to add to that record? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, Pasili, you said it. You said it good. Uh, I think there is a big difference between spiritual gift and natural talents. Some of the natural talents people uh, inherently think sometimes because you occupy, uh, you know, a, a passion uh, to preach, or you you have a, a strong desire to see people saved, or you have certain natural tendencies that are, are considered very. Uh, very charismatic, like you're eloquent or you can preach good or you can uh, bring people to tears in your words or, you know, mm -hmm. all these kind of things. And you naturally think, oh, I'm definitely an apostle now or maybe I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pastor because I can do so. So the natural abilities aren't necessarily uh, at all related to spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to say once again, 
uh, deliverance by itself isn't a, a gift at all. Mm -hmm. But even when it comes to deliverance, many people think that if I have, a, you know, a great anger or I can be very charismatic when I minister deliverance and I'm so angry with demons that I'm definitely a deliverance minister, but that's not what the ministry, any of the ministry should be based on our natural abilities, but rather, you know, the love for people, the love for Jesus and what God has put in your heart and the calling that God has placed on you rather than to rely on, on uh, uh, your ability to preach well or, or anything like that. So I think it's important to understand that just because you can't preach well doesn't mean that you are not called to be a pastor or something in the future. So mm -hmm. don't let your hindrance or, you know, listen, even me listening to Pastor Vlad, I'm constantly challenged by his sermons. He's, he's, and he is very anointed, but don't allow uh, someone else's, uh, how far they've gone in their preaching capacity to, to intimidate you or to discourage you from pursuing mm -hmm. what God has for you. You can very well be an evangelist, even though you're shy of people right now. In fact, many times it seems as if the area that you're called in is actually the area that you struggle in growing up. Mm. I, I knew yeah, uh, on. Uh, early so on that I was, I was called to be a preacher and I was born with a speech impediment. I was lisping until, uh, until the age of 12, not like until the age of three guys, 12. I was bullied in school for, for really bad lisp and stuff. And I believe that, you know, sometimes it seems as if this exact area that God wants to use you in is actually the area that you're struggling as well. So don't allow that to stop you because of your lack of natural abilities or talents. Maybe I'm not called to this. No, that shouldn't be a hindrance. You should focus on what the word of God says. Press in and let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. Come and on, he will so help good. you to overcome many of those hindrances in your life. Come on. That's so good. That's so good. So that's so good. Uh, talents and gifts. Talents is something that you are born with. It comes with your generic makeup and ability and uh, you practice it. Spiritual gifts, it really comes from the Holy Spirit and you get them when you're saved and you can seek them and desire them. Spiritual gifts are received while talents are inherited and you can develop them and you can grow them. But you can also grow in your spiritual gifts. Now, uh, follow-up question is, Does do unbelievers have spiritual gifts? Ilya, your Depends. thoughts? If I can jump in here. Yeah, I, uh, I believe that we need to first understand and differentiate between spiritual abilities and, and spiritual gifts. My personal belief is that uh, as a human being, we are made out of a spirit, soul and body and and on christians they also have spirit and because we have spirit our spirit has spiritual eyes spiritual ears it has spiritual senses and so people on christians can develop spiritual abilities meaning spiritual their spiritual senses are awakened and and they train their soul to recognize their spiritual abilities and 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 they 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 um through their will through their soul they're able to <clears throat> master certain aspect of spiritual abilities um so i believe that uh, non-believers they don't have the gifts of the spirit but they do have um they could develop a spiritual ability and that's, that's why we see that's that's why we see some some non-believers even experience certain spiritual phenomena mm -hmm. or even experience certain things whether it's through dreams through trances even an an, an an ability to see in the spirit and hear in the spirit sense in the spirit to a certain extent but this is where most unbelievers when they start developing these spiritual senses realize that they hit a ceiling and they start looking into other means to help them enhance their spiritual abilities, which usually end up being demonic. Uh, other spiritual meditations, they invite demons to enhance um, their spiritual abilities and they partner with, with demonic powers. But no, I don't believe that otherwise um, they can have the gifts of the spirit that we know as Christian um, being unbelievers. They only come that that's only uh, for those that are believers. Mm -hmm. 
Acts chapter 16, verse 16 kind of confirms what Pastor Eli was saying. And I'll just read it from the Bible. It says, One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. So uh, she connected to the wrong spirit. So if, if we open, if unbelievers open themselves up to demons, uh, it's obviously they're operating in 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 the wrong 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 direction. But mm -hmm. they were using evil spirits to predict the future. When we yeah. become Christians, we you must understand that every person has a spirit. Just mm -hmm. because as a, as a non-Christian your spirit is not non-existent your spirit is dead in the sense that it's not connected to god but it doesn't mean that it's not real or your spirit doesn't have doesn't function or it's like it's like lying in a grave it's still being used it still connects to the spiritual realm it's just disconnected from god and so when god comes into your life he resurrects your spirit it's not that your spirit was non-existent before or didn't function it's just it was annihilated and removed from God so your spiritual abilities could be completely cultivated to connect with the demonic realm and receive information and give information and really uh, really be used uh, by the enemy and operate and do ma magic do miracles and do all of this stuff and then your soul you know yields to that as well because it's really those things are done through the spirit they're not done through the soul and even though you're completely far away from God but those are not the same as being receiving gifts of the Holy Spirit and those are not the same as being used of the Holy Spirit. Rickard, do you have anything to say yeah. on that? Yeah, I think it's very interesting that if you would Google the word healing today, you would actually not get spiritual like Christ-filled healing. When you Google healing, a lot of new age things come up as well. Reiki healing, uh, chakras and doing different kind of new age practices, you know. And, and uh, I, I believe that the devil is a counterfeit. I don't think that he has creativity in him because God is the creator and there's no sense, no, 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 even a particle of God in the devil. So if God is a creator and he is creative, then the devil has none of that. All he can do is copy paste. So many of the gifts of the spirit, you may see something that seems similar, mm -hmm. uh, just like just like the people in Egypt. Pharaoh asked his magicians, hey, can you do the same thing as as Moses and Aaron are mm -hmm. doing? And they could do it to a certain degree. There was some counterfeit there. But the problem is when, when anyone accesses the spirit world like this uh, through demonic powers, it normally affects the person themselves because they have to engage in some sort of a covenant. Many times the people who practice these things, at least my experience from people involved in witchcraft and so on, is that they suffer from chronic sicknesses. They suffer from early death many times and mm -hmm. other kind of afflictions that attacks their family because... They're trying to access the spirit world through by the means of demonic powers to counterfeit what God has for his people. So, so it's important as believers not to be fooled or deceived just because, oh, this person said they used stones or crystals and she's feeling better in her body afterwards. Yeah, maybe she's feeling better in her body, but something else, because a principle that I go by is, uh, if the devil gives you something with his right hand, he will take something that your life depends on with his left. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like playing you all the time to where you get stuck in this cycle of affliction and torment either uh, 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 at the end of the day. So the only way that you can really uh, access these gifts and receive it freely is mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit because someone already paid the price, which was Jesus Christ. Yeah, and a lot of times like in the, in the occult so world, you either pay you know to to get activated in that stuff or or some people like even we're seeing in the comments right now people saying from the young age they started to get these uh particular um you know inclinations or they started to get these dreams or started to know information and so that uh, in, in itself you just must understand even before you're born again you have a spirit and your spirit was created to connect with the spirit realm your soul is connected to the to the emotional to the to the physical you connect with your soul to other people and your body connects you to the world and so just because you're even disconnected from God it doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to connect to the spirit realm and the devil will use 
the fact that you are disconnected from the realm of the Lord through Jesus and you're disconnected from that but you still long to be connected to the spirit realm and so He will bring you the counterfeit, He will bring you the fake, He will bring you the, um, the parts that will yeah. look yeah. real and in fact they will be real in themselves that yeah it will be a healing. Yes information will be accurate but the source of it when it's not rooted in, in, in the Gospel, when it's not rooted in Jesus, when it's not rooted in the Scripture, you, you are operating from another realm and then sooner or later the devil who is behind that, he only has one agenda and that is to kill, steal and destroy. And people who go to psychics, people who go and read horoscopes, people who try to get information from these other sources or who are the channels for those sources, you must understand is that you're being used by the enemy and the enemy will hurt you. He will um, steal, kill and destroy. And even if on the outside through law of attraction, through law of all this stuff, you know, connecting with universe and all of that and you feel like, oh, but I'm getting more money, I'm getting more famous, I'm getting more peace. Um, honestly, that is not how we judge whether something is true or not. Is it leading you to Jesus? Is it leading you to holiness? Is it leading you to righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ? Because this devil can give you all of that and he can take you to hell. Uh, but at the same time, usually all of these blessings that he gives, um, they have an expiration, expiration time and they have a very huge price. I remember one guy came, started coming to our church and um, his mom took him, he had, a, he had a paralysis, if I'm mistaken, if not mistaken, it was in Africa. She took him to um, Rayhard Bonke's, um, no, so in the beginning what she did is she took him to the native doctor, so uh, which was like a witch doctor in Africa. This witch doctor did some ceremony on him and um, this paralysis actually was gone. He was completely healed of paralysis as a boy. And then um, some two weeks later, he starts to develop swelling in his knees now this is him saying this to me because I personally didn't believe when he said that. The swelling got so big that there were holes developed in his knees. His knees got so big he couldn't walk. So now he didn't have a paralysis but he was completely not able to walk. He said, mice were coming out from the swelling in his knees. And I was like, bro, this, this can't be. I was like, I don't believe in this stuff. And he's like, he's like, Vlad, he's like, I, I saw mice coming out of my own body. I was like, how can mice live in a human body? I was like, man, th this, this stuff is not real. I'm like, are you sure you were not on drugs? And so <laughs> he, the stuff that he was telling me, but you know, Rickard, you've been in Africa, so this is not strange yeah. <laughs> for those people who've been in Africa. And uh, so I was like, so what happened then? He couldn't walk anymore, but not due to paralysis, due to swollen knees out of nowhere. So they take him to Reinhard Bonke's meeting and they prayed for him for deliverance. Uh, demons come out of him. And he says his, his knees go back to normal. The swelling, he's in front of us, he shrinks. And so um, he's like, he has a pus that comes out and he starts to walk and no problem whatsoever. And he told me this, he said, he says, they fixed the witch doctor, fixed the paralysis. And, but they also gave me another problem, you know, because really uh, the spiritual people, they don't remove your problems, they replace them. Oh, with, that's good. With problems yeah, you currently so don't have. And so it's just a, yeah. those problems will take a while to manifest. And so, yeah, you might get healed of this, but then you got another problem. And so that's why it's you just should come to Jesus and Jesus doesn't replace problems. He removes them um, in Jesus' name. Now, yes. um, when it comes to how do you know what is your spiritual gift? Or how did you guys discover your spiritual gifts? H how does somebody know their spiritual gift. That's good. I think Ilya should go first on that one. Because the reason why we uh, I ask him is because since prophecy was mentioned three times and he's the prophet of the house, you know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let Rick, Ilya you go already ahead started. Person. You already start speaking. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you for go me, for it. <laughs> <laughs> for me, for well, me, Ilya should go first, but let me say this. <laughs> Uh, so for me it's personally, so how I knew that, uh, you know, the this gifts of the Spirit in my life, I think that God uh, puts a genuine desire in your heart. I think many times mm. that the desire that you have in your heart is actually an indication of the plan of God for your life. 
Uh, many times, you know, in my early years, I was asking God, you know, what is your plan? And many people have asked me, hey, give me a word of prophecy. I don't know what God's plan is for my life. And then someone came and told me one day when I was in prayer, I'm like, what, what, what is this plan? What gifts do I have? Am I meant to be an apostle or a prophet? Will I prophesy? Will I heal? What is, what is it? And, and someone told me, what, do you, what is that God-given desire in your heart? What do you dream of? What, what do you hunger for? What do you want to see in your life? And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I see myself preaching, but I don't know if that's what God wants me to do. And they said, well, you know, the Bible says that God will direct your steps. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that he will direct your standing. Sometimes Ooh, when God that's gives good, you... Bro, say, say, say that again. <laughs> you got somebody dropped it in the chat. God directs our steps. He doesn't direct our standing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when That's you so seem good. like you come don't on, know what God has for you or like what is that passion, what is that calling the gifts in my life, take a step, follow the desire that God has put in your heart. As long as that desire obviously okay. is in line with scripture, I'm not talking about the desire to sin, obviously, but God given desires begin to take steps in that direction. And then God can direct you like, hey, you know, you want to take a little bit to the left here or you want to take a little bit to the right. So that's how I started. I started following that. Like, hey, I, I love to preach. I love to see people healed. I love to see, see the gift of faith in people. And so I started moving in that direction. And it was because I took one step that led me to another. And suddenly I found myself being under the training of a prophet who, who occupied the office of a prophet prophesying and, and so on and so forth. So uh, being, uh, you know, having all those gifts being uh, imparted in me because I took that initial step to follow the desires in my heart. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, and I'm, I mean, I, I personally, and this is just me personally, I believe that as Christians, we can, and God wants us to operate in all of the gifts of the spirit. That's what I personally believe. And it's just, you know, every gift, every area, every direction, it takes time and effort to perfect in your life, to nurture and grow that gift. So you might not be able to nurture and, 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 and equip and grow all the gifts of the spirit at the same time. But, you know, you follow one direction and then God will organically lead you from one gift to another until you, you know, you're fully equipped to operate uh, uh, in the Holy Spirit. That's, that's how it started for me, at least. Mm -hmm. I very very well said, uh, Pastor Rickard. I when people ask me, uh, uh, prophesy or tell me or what does God say? Which gift? What what gift do I have? I I tell them you have all nine. Uh, because with the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. uh, we got all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now that doesn't mean that you know how to operate in all of them. That you've de you've gained mastery over the gifts, mm -hmm. uh, but I personally believe that when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive all things pertaining to Him, uh, and we receive uh, all things that 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 come with Him. We we get the gift giver, and in any moment and time, any given time, Holy Spirit can use us in any of the gifts as He is uh, willing. Uh, but that being said. Just because we have the potential of all the gifts operating in us, it doesn't mean that we know how all those gifts are operating in our life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we yield to them when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit wants to use them. Mm -hmm. For example, you might uh, sense that the Lord wants, uh, uh, Lord wants to use you to, for example, uh, a name or an, a person's face, maybe your friend, particular friend came to your mind and you sense that you need to text them or call them, but in that moment in time, you're just like, oh, I don't know, man, I'm just thinking randomly about that person, and you ignored it, but this is the moment in time Holy Spirit wanted to you, uh, was, was bringing that person up to you uh, through that particular gift for you to call that person and encourage that person, and that's what prophecy is, 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 is encouragement, edification, and you miss the moment, miss the timing of the Holy Spirit, you didn't yield to that gift, you didn't yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and you and, and the Holy Spirit uh, did not use you in that moment in time to prophesy to somebody, meaning build and edify somebody, encourage somebody in the faith. And so, um, I believe that as Christians, we have all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, 
but we need to uh, learn about them. We need to desire them. Now, you might lean toward one gift more than the other. Maybe some of you might have a stronger desire to prophesy. Uh, some of you might have a stronger desire to, uh, to, to uh, be used in the area of healing. So the gift of healing. Uh, so you might be working and the Holy Spirit might be training you and teaching you from the scripture. Um, how uh, how to operate in that gift. Um, the uh, Apostle Paul says to Timothy that the anointing that you receive will teach you so that the Spirit of God actually teaches us how to master those gifts, how to use those gifts, and how to be skillful in those gifts. For me personally, was uh, I started receiving uh, I started receiving prophecies from other men of God that God's going to use me in the gift of prophecy. And that's something that I actually, one of the gifts that I was actually really scared of and I did not uh, did not really honestly even desire that um, and it, it was uh, I be I guess I'm a very logical person and then they had things has to make sense to me I'm one plus one has to equal two and then in the in the spiritual realm things are just out of whack and it's they have their own order how things mean differently and and then just just it's a whole different thing that for our conscious mind uh, is sometimes hard to hard to understand. And that's how I was. And I uh, for a long time, I uh, to be honest, I even resisted it. But then I when I begin to grow in the Lord, I begin to understand that more. Um, God, like in Rickard's case as well, started connecting me randomly uh, to prophets and they begin to pull that gift out of me, meaning they begin to encourage me in that gift, cultivate uh, that gift in me and, um, and and push me, encourage me to begin to practice and give me some practical tips on how to uh, how to yield to the gift of the spirit. And um, uh, yeah, that's that, that's kind of how I came um, to practice the gifts and and continue to practice, continue to grow in it, read books, listen to podcasts go into the ministries and and, and be around the, the the people that that practice the gift watch them honor them uh with my time with my with, with uh, even my finances and and just my uh, uh my efforts of being around and be humble enough to learn and 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 cultivating those gifts in that manner that's so good ivan do you have any yeah uh what i would say is uh just start start somewhere you know, uh, start doing good, start serving, start, um, start doing the basics. You know, a lot of times, uh, people want to do great things, but they don't, they don't do the basics. They don't like read their Bible. They don't like fast. They don't pray. Just start doing the basics and, uh, and God will lead you. You know, there's a desire will come into your heart. The anointing of the Holy spirit will lead you. Uh, another thing I will say, if you're not baptized in the Holy spirit, you need to get baptized in the Holy spirit because it's the gift of the Holy Spirit, you know. If you look in the book of Acts, even if you look at Jesus' life, Jesus actually didn't even do any miracles until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then you see the first miracle, you know, and all the miracles that happened is is because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So start doing the basics. You know, if you need to fast, fast. If you need to pray, pray. If you need to read your Bible, if you need to forgive somebody, start doing those simple little things and then start serving. Uh, oh, I really yeah. like when it comes down to healing, uh, Jesus called healing and an act uh, doing good works and the apostle called healing act of kindness. And so mm -hmm. start doing good to other people, start serving, start just doing the basics, those little basics. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll feel a tug in your heart that you want to, you know, pray for somebody, you want to do this. And then, you know, you can step out in faith and, and, uh, and you got to start somewhere, start somewhere. It's, it's, it's a faith, it's faith is a muscle. You got to activate it, activate mm -hmm. it. So, you know, if you are a parked car and you're like asking God, God, uh, oh. lead me, lead me. Well, it's kind of hard to lead a parked car. Start mm -hmm. moving, you know, start mm -hmm. serving, do something, um, do something. Um, and then be obedient to the Holy Spirit because mm -hmm. our greatest oh. success is when we're obedient to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's the Holy Spirit that, that all these That's gifts good. flow from. And um, one last scripture I want to um, leave before we wherever Pastor Vlad you'll take us is is in, in the book of Hebrews it says that our that our senses are developed through use. Mm -hmm. Through use. Come you on. know that's right. Um, yeah. You gotta mm -hmm. sharpen, you gotta sharpen your, mm -hmm. your senses. So it, it's done through use. Like some people have developed abilities to um 
for example, you know, they can identify where when when a diamond is fake why is because they they develop their senses and mm -hmm. maybe a regular person won't won't tell the difference what's a fake what's a real but this person he's through use through use through use he's developed his senses that he mm -hmm. can identify so do the basics do the basics and start practicing you know That's if good. you don't practice you know, it's like start go to start going to start working out at the gym. Start developing that muscle. That's good. Start developing and and with that said, be obedient to the Holy Spirit because um, it's very dangerous to develop spiritual gifts and not being obedient to the Holy Spirit. But that's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. In Second Timothy one six, it says, "Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands." 1st Timothy chapter 4 14 it says do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of eldership so in both references Paul tells Timothy that he got the gift when the hands were laid on him and as the hands were being laid the prophecy was released now um, I like what Ivan mentioned as well right now because if we're reading in the book of Acts carefully we see that every time that the Spirit of God was coming upon people and they were baptized what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit or Spirit of God will come upon believers we see that there were manifestations that were happening now in some cases we saw they were prophesying not just mm -hmm. speaking in tongues so I believe that through the baptism of the Holy Spirit we are given access to all the gifts of the Holy Spirit come on but sometimes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit we're given not just the access but the use of some other gifts of the Holy Spirit like prophecy some people start seeing visions and dreams though they're not mentioned dreams yeah, and visions yeah. as gifts of the Holy Spirit in Corinthians but it's still spiritual abilities your spiritual eyes are open but what's important here is to, we must understand is that to receive is is one way to begin to release the gifts is a total another one there is a problem with too many mm. people that received it and very little people that actually released it because mm. how many on, of us say like it got is. baptized in the Holy Spirit and we actually received more than we release in fact I would go as far as yeah. to say that none of us are releasing what we all received we are re we always received more than what we are releasing yeah. and so and partially some of us don't believe we received anything because during the receiving when somebody laid hands on us when we got filled with the Holy Spirit we start speaking in tongues but did you know that you also got access now to see in the Spirit to hear in the Spirit to get words of knowledge to pray for healing to cast out demons to to have the sermon of Spirit and so if you believe yeah, yeah. that Come you on. didn't receive anything then guess what's gonna happen it's not that you didn't receive it is that you will be too shy too cowardly and too intimidated mm -hmm. to even attempt to release anything, to attempt mm -hmm. to even believe. You're going to brush it off and say, no, that's just my own mind speaking. You won't even take a risk. And so what I want to challenge you is if you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you received impartation, uh, just believe in that. One of the things that helped me to believe is when even uh, guys like John Chi, when they came and they prayed and I like didn't feel anything, okay. When TB Joshua prayed for me, I, I didn't fall. I mean, I did fall, but he did push me. So, and he's dead now, so I, I can say that, okay. But <laughs> I fell because I got pushed. And, uh, but I didn't feel anything. And so therefore, I believed that I got nothing because I didn't feel it. And, but that changed when I met with Vladimir Montian in the Ukraine and I got a lot of, criticism for that and for those, those of you who are maybe Ukrainian or Russian I just gave you more fuel for criticism but um, when I met with him and he prayed for me at the time when he was doing well in his ministry and ministry was really successful and he tell he said something that changed my perspective and he said you received the anointing and I was like I did he's like you have it and I was like I do and he said now wow. and go and release it so I came home, I really thought that I'm just going to go wave my hand and everybody's going to fall. I did wave my hand. Um, nobody fell. Nothing happened. For four months, <laughs> nothing was happening. In fact, I start praying for healing 
four months straight nothing was happening but something happened in me. I believed that I received and then people start getting healed. Then I start getting impressions Come on. Yeah. but it starts with believing that you received and that's what Paul told Timothy. He says don't neglect. So I really want to remind you to stir. Now if you didn't receive it, if you're a Christian and you didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't speak in tongues and you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I really want to encourage you to start seeking that. Start mm -hmm. pressing in um, and then be one of those hungry people. When you see a minister of God ministering, like ask for impartation, man. Like ask for, ask them to pray for you. And if you don't feel anything, it's fine. Um, just believe that you received and begin to, begin to release that, begin to walk in boldness. Some of us get a greater or a greater measure of that by a visitation. Like we have a visit from God in a very supernatural way and after that we see an increase, a growth in that. Some of us, we really start seeing those gifts manifest after we actually start serving people and not focus on am I getting it right but are people being loved and ministered to? Because the moment you remove mm -hmm. yourself out of the equation and stop focusing on uh, like, oh, but what if, what if I fail? Like, you're never going to fail if you're trying to love people, if you're trying to help mm -hmm. people. Serving on, these so gifts so are good. tools mm -hmm. to help you serve. If you see how Rebecca watered the camels and then the Bible says, then the unnamed servant gave her the gifts that those camels carried. So I always tell people that if you want to have access to the gifts, water the camels. Find a mm. place to serve, find a problem to solve, find a demon to cast out, find a sickness to remove from people through prayer and through act of faith. Begin to serve and they will begin to be activated. The moment you think of yourself as some big shot preacher or a minister or like, hey I just want to like appear spiritual, you're going to flop and fail. But if you're just mm -hmm. going to look at people and saying, you know what, I really want to help this person and God gives you that impression. God gives you that picture and you take the bold step. Now in the beginning stages it probably will be wise not to come out and says, thus says the Lord. Mm. You know, but maybe just be more calm and say, you know, I feel in my heart, um, is it okay if I uh, pray for you? I see you having a cane. Hey, I believe in God and He heals people. Uh, would you give me the permission to pray for you? And then, you know, you pray for them. Hey, how do you feel? Um, mm, yeah, I feel fire. Oh great. Would you like to take a step of faith without this cane and, and see how you feel? I'll, I'll hold you if something so that we, we help people. The goal is that these gifts are supposed to serve people. So if we don't care about people, we're not serving anywhere in the church already without them, then we're not trying to upgrade our serving. We're just trying to upgrade our title and our ego and God, even if He will give it to you, it'll probably hurt you and other people. So uh, gifts are for um, serving people. Any other tips or um, ideas would you have when you begin to operate in those gifts? Some maybe wisdom that you guys have learned, mistakes maybe you have made um, in operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I think one of the important things, especially when you're starting in operating in the gifts and trying to like, you know, you, you feel the, the, the notion God, Holy Spirit is, is clearly, you know, pushing you to like, let's do this. Uh, just like Pastor Vlad explained to not, not try to, because there's a difference between having faith, which is necessary and foolishness. Those are two different things. F faith would be to pray for someone for healing foolishness would be to you know uh, push someone out of a wheelchair against their will uh, or to prophesy and try to uh, uh, because we see and we imitate those who operate in the gifts uh, very clearly and very powerfully so we're like oh i have the gift of prophecy now so i'm gonna go ahead and just throw myself under the bus uh, so that god can save me from under the bus uh, by performing miracles when i pray I, I don't think after, that we after can I get really... run over by the bus. <laughs> yeah. After I get run over by the bus, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that that the spiritual gifts really work in a sense that you're trying to 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 bend God's arm to begin to to use you. Like, hey, God, I've announced it to so many people now that this person in the wheelchair is gonna stand up. <laughs> that if you don't bring the person, if you don't bring healing, I'm gonna be in trouble here. You know. So so there's a level there where faith is necessary. But then it, it, it don't go too far in trying to, 
kind of uh, represent God and, and like, hey, uh, I am uh, the servant of God and everything that's happening now, uh, it is because God has called me. So, so just uh, take the humble approach instead. Uh, a first word of prophecy, you don't necessarily need to go out and say, hey, God told me that uh, you should pray for your daughter, you know, because when you say God told me to pray for your daughter, even though you feel it or you sense it on the inside of you, by the time the person says like, hey, I don't have a daughter. So like, OK, so did like what's happening here? Because God said it after all, you know, so try to avoid throwing yourself under under the bus of emotional damage while you're while you're uh, ministering and trying to exercise and practice and grow in those gifts. I think that's the main tip that I would have uh, regarding, especially in the beginning. Ivan, you made some mistakes in praying for healing. What what are some of those? <laughs> so uh, what I would say is uh, you have to, we all have to start somewhere uh -huh. and you know, David didn't come out and kill a Goliath from from the start. He had a he had some practice somewhere else. You know, he was doing he was shepherding sheep. Mm -hmm. He had practice with the bear. He had practice with the lion. And so those that want to start somewhere, go start praying for people on the streets. You know, go, you know, asking for people if if. If they even have any pain in their body, start somewhere and start collecting those little victories because mm -hmm. faith is like a muscle and you need to grow it. You need to, God needs to develop your confidence in those, even those little victories. You know, when we started going out and praying for people on the streets or even in the mall uh, and you start seeing those little victories, those little victories really helped build faith and confidence to keep going forward like imagine if you keep praying for people and you don't see nothing that can really bring you down but mm -hmm. if you start seeing little little tiny victories and you start celebrating those little tiny victories and keep going forward don't stop you know because sometimes you know people pray like they pray for people in the wheelchairs and they don't see them get out and then they stop praying for people totally and uh so but if you get little victories, maybe that's a, just a little bit of pain that shifted. You know, I celebrate that. Why? Because I'm going to take that, take that and put it in my archive of faith and I'm going to grow it, grow it, grow it. And I remember, you know, we had those little victories on the streets and then we went to Guatemala on a mission trips. And you know what? We implemented the same thing and we started seeing a little bigger victories and we're like, yes, and celebrate those bigger ones. But yes, I've prayed for people and nothing happened. Um, I pray for people that um, still remain the same, but I can't stop. I have to continue growing. I have to continue mining. I have to continue developing my faith muscle. You know, Jesus is our perfect oh. theology. He, every single person that came to Jesus, actually in the Bible, we, we, we won't find anywhere in the Bible that a person that came to Jesus that didn't receive. Every single person. I've, I've searched the scriptures. I couldn't mm -hmm. find any. The one that positioned themselves to Jesus. Now, Jesus is the standard. We are pulling up to that standard. Um, well, I like to say, if we want to have the results that Jesus had, we have to live the lifestyle Jesus lived. You know, he mm -hmm. lived a, a sacrificial fasting, mm -hmm. giving. Um, he, he completely devoted himself to the Holy Spirit. You see, he had those kind of results. But, but we can't stop. We can't stop. We have to keep going forward and celebrate those little victories and develop those muscles, you know, develop, you know, I, like we, we equip interns and, and I, I, I try to tell interns, you know, don't go up to people in wheelchairs when your faith is not there yet. I mean, you can do whatever you want to, but start getting those little victories. And then, you know, once those little victories, you can ask people, hey, you want to stand up just as you mentioned. And actually, we actually seen people get out of wheelchairs, uh, one in, in the in the mall. And uh, so develop those small victories you know kind of like david that line that bear and then keep going forward take start keep taking risks you know faith a lot of times is risk sometimes you have to like throw yourself out there and and hope god will um hold you <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's that is still that that is still good because you know you know everybody can talk in the dry boat but it's when we stop step out on that water you know mm -hmm. So I, I wow. made a decision within myself that I'd rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat 
talker. You know, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. So, sink or swim. I would, I would say, <laughs> say, say that again. Come on, man God. Sink or swim. Sometimes you might sink, but that's okay. Jesus is there to pull us out and say, hey, uh, at least you tried, you know. <laughs> mm, <laughs> but we got to start good. somewhere. We got to start hey, somewhere I, I and, and say that develop again, bro. our faith. I'd rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat talker because mm. everybody can talk in the boat. But we all need to step out, and that's where God wants to meet us is on that water because that's when that's where miracles happen. That's where the supernatural happens. That's come where on, um, God on. wants to meet you on, on the other side. On the other side, I like to say like this. On this side of the line, you're a chicken. On that side of the line is where the miracles happen. And so mm. you make a decision. You have to take a step of faith. See, the Holy Spirit, um, He is waiting for you on the other side. But but it, but if you don't want to cross that side, yes, it's not comfortable. But but if you get yourself uncomfortably comfortable, you're going to be more comfortable in the uncomfortable. But because you're not stepping out and and making yourself uncomfortable, you're you're not seeing um, God flow through you. You're mm -hmm. just you're just being in the safe place in that boat. Either faith zone or, or a safe zone, but you can't be in both. Come on, somebody. Yeah, come on. Amen, amen. Ilya, what are your thoughts yeah. on on that, uh, on kind of so beginning, kind beginning of summarize, to operate in that? Yeah, to summarize even what uh, all of you were, were saying, Romans chapter 12, verse 3 speaks to me very clearly. Uh, that says that by the grace given to me, it's an NIV version. Uh, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself sober judgment with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each one of you. Hmm. We have to uh, understand where we are at with our faith, with our walk with God. We have to be sober minded about it. That means like what uh, Ivan just shared. If you never pray for somebody that's uh, on a wheelchair, uh, I mean, if you never pray for somebody and their pinky got better, probably stepping out and praying for somebody in a wheelchair is or out people, of your faith level. People start with the dead. They start going to the mortuary for the dead people. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, kind of like yeah. lifting so, 300 pounds. If you never lifted it, it's oh. going to fall back on you. <laughs> oh, wow. Come yeah, on. yeah, no. And then and then what happens is, is you're setting yourself up for, uh, for uh, multiple disappointments which destroy your faith and the people that you're praying for. And so Apostle Paul says, listen, uh, think of yourself in accordance of the level of faith that is in you. The revelation that you have, because according to the revelation, we have the faith. Mm -hmm. And so we all know that God can do the impossible. That, but do you know that God can do through you the impossible? That's a whole different story. And so um, in, uh, in, my, in, in, my, in my personal life, uh, what and, and when I teach people, uh, especially in the, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the prophetic word of knowledge, operating in those things, I tell people develop a track record with God. Uh, in my personal life, uh, I, I on my uh, on the phone since the time of iPhone 20, 2007, I had a note on my iPhone that 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 was labeled a tracker and still do. That's they labeled track rec my track record with God, and mm -hmm. any impressions that God would give me, I would write them down and date them and I would mm -hmm. test them. Mm -hmm. uh, it started personal in my personal life. And then I had literally hundreds of uh, things that the Lord spoke to me and whether they were right or wrong, I would write them down. And when I was wrong, I would evaluate them and I'd check and I asked Holy Spirit, like, where did I get it wrong? What maybe I didn't hear correctly. Maybe I did not sense correctly. And, and I would I would learn that way and I would have a track record with God. Many people, um, they get out to slay Goliath before they even attempted to go against lion and a bear. I mean, before they even attempted to uh, 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 scare a wolf away. Mm -hmm. And so David, before he faced Goliath and he won a big giant public victory, he had many private uh, victories. And so... Uh, I encourage people that are learning to hear God, learning to operate in in the gifts of the uh, of the Spirit, learning to to um, step out by faith. Is that before you take a giant leap, maybe just just take a take a, just maybe just start crawling first. Mm -hmm. uh, Bible uh, everywhere we see in the Bible, God is a God of of progression, uh, and so uh, 
we need to learn to progress in our spiritual giftings with God. We need to learn how to progress and walk with God and walk out our faith. Uh, when it comes to spiritual gifts like prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, I always tell people so, uh, you have to learn um, uh, how to deliver uh, the, the word. It's, uh, so I, I teach people to, you know, you start with the shotgun and then you go to a sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you start wide and then you start narrowing things. Sometimes people, they see these seasoned prophets to come out and, you know, call out the name and then, and then, then the phone number and this, and then go straight deep into the pro uh, into the problem of, uh, that the person has. And we get so inspired and we want to start doing that. We so I want to be like that like the sniper uh, rifle, we want to go just one shot, one kill. But it takes years and years and walk with God, our faith being built, uh, many uh, tries and fails mm -hmm. until we learn to hear God and interpret His voice clearly. So when it comes to like the prophetic gifts, the, the, the word of knowledge, uh, start wide. What I mean by uh, wide, how I practice, you know, some sometimes uh, like God would show me a... a uh, through a word of knowledge, uh, some some person has a specific issue. Let's say it's in their body, in their organ, for example. Maybe uh, it's uh, a kidney or something. But I would come out and say, "Hey, I sense that there's an issue in your abdominal area." Oh yes, yes, I do. What's the issue? Okay, it's a kidney. Okay, so now I'm confirmed what I've been seeing or what the Lord has been telling me that that person has a kidney issue. Now my faith and confidence goes up, and then if there's something more, the Lord wants to. Uh, say I am more I am more confident that I'm hearing the Lord. The person is more confident, and their faith is built up that I am hearing from the Lord. And then slowly but surely, you start wide, and you start narrowing down, and you start building your uh, your faith, the person's faith, and you start building a track record with God. So start start wide, and then start narrowing down um, uh, with your experience mm -hmm. and in uh, in the in the ministry with 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 the person and so that's um kind of but you have to start uh somewhere you're gonna make mistakes some people say about practicing like prophetic and um and the word of knowledge and say well, what do you mean by what do you mean by practicing is that something that one can god make mistakes when god speaks no god when god speaks he always speaks correctly he always speaks true but his voice gets filtered through our soul, so through our emotion, through our will. It gets ex filtered through our experiences, through our understanding, through our revelation of the word. And when it gets down, sometimes it's it's filtered too much. It, it loses the content of, of the original thing. And so um, when we practice, we mean that we learn to 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 deliver the word more clearly mm -hmm. we learn to hear god more clearly and 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 uh, apply bring an application more clearly and that comes with practice that's a, such a good um good good wisdom i would highlight as well a few things and one of them is i think one of you guys have read already romans chapter 12 verse 6 and it says that having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them and then it says, if prophecy, yes. let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. So I want us to see the two things in beginning to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not just even beginning, honestly, it's just the wisdom to use that all the time, according to the grace and according to faith, meaning sometimes there's grace in the room, there's, you feel the grace and sometimes no grace, but the faith is there inside of you. There's that, that boldness, I'm going to go for it, God gives me that. It's important to minister within the limits of God's grace. All of us have a measure of God's gift and we have to know that measure and try to stay within that measure. If you're just starting out, God is giving you grace to heal some diseases and give words of knowledge, stay in that lane. Don't embark on something super crazy right away. Let the Holy Spirit increase that grace measure first before you take those risks. Now, Apostle Paul was called to the Gentiles, 2 Timothy 1 11, Acts 13 46 through 47, Acts 18 6 and Acts 18 uh, 11 13. God made it clear that Paul, Gentiles, Peter, Jews. It's interesting that everywhere Paul went, he gravitated toward the Jews. 
and he always got beaten by the Jews. What would have happened if he would have went straight to the Gentiles? Gentiles didn't beat him. It was the Jews that beat him all the time. You don't see Peter being beaten by Jews like that. He always ended up with the Gentiles because the Jews rejected him. He got beaten by them and so I'm not saying I, I, I am not a scholar in this and I do not know all the counsel of God but kind of looking from the side and thinking okay why don't you just go straight to the people that why don't you stay within that lane that the Lord has called you and just go from there. When we step out of the grace or the faith in ministering the gifts of the Holy Spirit what begins to happen is that we can experience a certain maybe setback and certain disappointment and so how do you increase that grace is honestly start with the private devotion and then take it to public risks. And so if your public risks is not founded in your private relationship, very soon that public risk might lead, lead to a ruin. Let me say that again. If you're publicly taking risks for God but you have not grounded yourself privately in the relationship with God. Don't say it. You might throw yeah. these stones and you, you're going to keep missing the Goliath. And so David's mm -hmm. public risks were grounded in his private relationship. So if you want to increase the measure of your grace, you want to increase the measure of that faith, do it privately with God. So that when you step out publicly, you don't take reckless risks, but you take justified. Now they look like risks to other people. To you, it's a justifiable risk. Why? Because it's backed up by a private devotion. The other part as on, a pastor, I want to mention as a pastor and all of us here being today in a local church. When you're ministering in a local church, you must respect the culture of the church you're ministering. Yes. The Bible says in yes. 1 Corinthians so. chapter 14 verse 29, let the prophets speak two or three and let the others judge. Each church has a different culture. Learn the culture of that church. Some churches are more prophetic, Others are more prayer driven. Some are very evangelistic and some are apostolic. The biggest mistake you can make is to come to a church and try to change the culture with your gift based on what you've seen in your previous church or based on how things work in the church that you attend. Honor the culture and you will earn the right to be heard in that church or be received. Just because you have something to say, you have a gift to minister to the church, it doesn't mean you have the right to be heard. Yep. You can change the culture slowly, say it. Say it. but every church culture can change and it will change only slowly. Because we've had these guys who would come in and um, sometimes, one of them particularly, great man, friend of mine actually, come in as a prophet. And so, and in the previous church that he's from, you know, if you're a prophet, you have a word, you, you, you run straight to the front and you grab a microphone and it's like an open season. Anybody who has anything to say, but again, those churches are very small a lot of times and they, that's their protocol. So he comes and during worship, he's like, you could see he's getting a deposit, okay? Because he's yelling and screaming and like very, very loud and... And I'm like looking at the back, I'm like, yep, prophet got connected. Uh, and he's one of the old school prophets, you know. Uh, so yeah, so he comes to me and he's already like shaking, okay. Like in our church, if you shake, we cast demons out of you. <laughs> so, uh, so, and he's not understanding that we're not a prophetic church, we're more a deliverance church. So I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, which spirit is this? I'm discerning the spirits and he's like, Pastor Kiramarabara, Pastor Rabarabara, Sandaraba, Pastor Kiramarabara, can I deliver a word, Kiramana? And so like every other word is Kiramana, Kiramana. And so, and I'm, and I'm thinking, I was like, this guy is, he's like, it, it's taken over me. I can't control it. And to me, that's a sign. If you can't control it, like something is, that Spirit of God is a spirit of self-control. If you can't control it, like, I'm scared if you grab a microphone, what's going to happen? And so, and I was like, buddy, come over here. I was like, sit down. <laughs> and it was very painful because part of me is like, Vlad, you're quenching the Holy Spirit. Vlad, you're not letting the Holy Spirit speak. You know, and I, I sit him down and I said, listen, I said, what is the Holy Spirit saying? And he says, I don't know. He will only say it when I grab the microphone. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, it's buddy. <laughs> that, I'm like, yeah, okay. And I was like, well, I'm not giving you a microphone. And so then he come down, he went back 
And honestly, I battled because as a pastor, I was like, man, did I just quench the Holy Spirit? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm scared. I'm not like shaking like this under the power of God. He's shaking, but it's kind of a routine thing that he has. And so he did it again. And then, uh, you know, kind of like calm him down and say, hey, that in our church, I was like, if you have a word, you know, submit it to me. Let me know. We have a church. We have a, we have a protocol. We have an order. And uh, let me know and I'll let you know to release it. I was like, this is what I told him. I said, our church won't receive that word. The reason why, they'll think you're crazy. <laughs> I said, our church will think you have a demon. So I was like, it will fall on flat ears. I was like, just come to our prayers. Let people actually see that you're normal and that you don't need deliverance and maybe go through our deliverance prayer line so that we can be confirmed that you actually don't need deliverance. And, and then, and I was like, and maybe next time when you have a word, like don't act like you got electrocuted. Just, just come normally and just speak normally and stuff. So again, but that's the way in our church. And some churches like, that's the way you deliver a prophetic word is that you come out and you're shaking uncontrollably. You can't control anything. It comes out, out of you. And in that church, probably that is normal and that's how it's perceived that it's it's a prophetic word and so and it's not about Holy Spirit as much as it's the vessel that he's using and the culture of the church that those vessels are being used that's why the Bible says let one do that and the rest of the people judge don't just simply say oh God said we, we can't even like digest it we can't even dissect it we can't even judge it because he said thus says the Holy Spirit yeah, I'm not doubting the Holy Spirit. I'm just doubting the vessel that sometimes He could use. We can judge the prophetic words. We can compare it with the scripture and we can compare it like, is this true? Uh, especially if it reveals with things in the past instead of just like blindly saying, oh yeah, it must be God. Because I mean, then we have these people who would come up and like, hey, God told me to marry you and like this other person already has three children and is living happily with the husband. And so like, we have to be very careful with that and, and honor the church culture. Um, so, when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, can you lose a spiritual gift by sinning once you received it at the time of baptism of the Holy Spirit? That's a, that's a part a, about that is Pastor Rick, you want to take it away? <laughs> no, go, go. Okay. The scary part about uh, that is no. Uh, the scripture tells us that God gives us those gifts and he doesn't take you back. Um, and, um, and another thing is that we need to distinguish the uh, that there is a clear difference between the gift and the character. Just because somebody is moving mightily in the gift, that doesn't automatically mean that God approves of their character, which often in our own eyes we see a person moving mightily in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a certain gifting and anointing on their life and then we assume that they live a, a holy life a righteous life that their their character is in order and the character is almost like jesus's character and so um so we need to distinguish the the gift uh from their character and that means as well as that we could sin our life and yet the gifting could still be functional uh, and operational and um, this is where it's up to us and our private relationship with the Holy Spirit to make sure to take care of our character to develop to develop our character through the scriptures with the help of the Holy Spirit but the gifting is not subject to our character that's a good thing and it's a bad thing the good thing is that if we needed to be absolutely blameless, then none of us would actually have the gift. If we would have to be absolutely perfect at all times, none of us would actually deserve and have the gift. The only Jesus is the one, the only man on this earth would actually have be able to have uh, and operate on those gifts. So that's a good thing. But the bad thing is that you can still operate in the gift, yet live very soulish life, uh, have very terrible character. That's why one of the things about the man of God, some some people complain about some men of God that their that their character is not that good. That once again shows that it's the character and the gift are not one and the same. Gives God gives us the responsibility to continue to work on our character, and and He helps us with that. But the gifting is just that it's a gift it's not earned it's not a wage holy we receive the holy spirit with him we received his gifts he gives it to us as he wills and those gifts are operational in us 
And by sinning, we don't stop operating the gift. But we, if we stop practicing them, uh, if we uh, if we sin, we just dull them, and they can go dormant until we come back to practice them and come back to the Lord. And so that's that's my take. That's yeah, good. and and I uh, if I can read from Matthew seven here, and this is one of the very 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 common Bible verses, but. I feel like it's kind of been, it's so common that people forget about it. It says, Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, mm -hmm. cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? It doesn't say here that they've prophesied fake prophecies or that they did fake deliverances. It just says that they did it actually the way they were supposed to do it. And then Jesus replies and said, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Mm -hmm. To me, what I hear here is that you can minister for God and practice lawlessness. So, and I'm, I'm, this is something that many pastors, I think more than what pastors admit to actually struggle with in their faith that like, Let's say that there is a pastor who, who is having the, his personal battles or whatever, and he falls into some kind of sexual immorality or something or whatever it might be. And then he comes on Sunday feeling really guilty and like, oh, man, what should I do? Ministers, spirit of God falls. People are set free. People are healed. And then suddenly the minister is like, well, I guess God is OK with me. Since, mm. since, since his anointing is falling, prophetic is flowing, this is flowing, uh, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm good then. So, mm. so, so just as Pastor Ilya said, to wrongfully think, engage that because God is using you, that he approves of your lifestyle. It's two separate things. Mm -hmm. Something that I would say is uh, we all need to be, to, to be under covering. You know, if, you, if we look at the Bible... Uh, Timothy, we know that Paul said about Timothy that for him to stir up the gifts because Timothy's gift was being dormant. Mm -hmm. And imagine if if Timothy didn't have a Paul in his life to mm -hmm. speak into his life, you know, Challenge to him. watch out for his blind spots. You know, I think for those of us that that want to step out and be used by God, it's very important that we are grounded and rooted, that we are a part of a local church, that we have a life group, a home group, that we're submitted to mentors, to leaders, to those that have maybe went a little further than than us and be submitted there's there's protection there's protection in uh, in covering like a sheep by itself is actually um vulnerable to wolves but a sheep in the, in a sheepfold is there's there's covering you know when we're transparent when we're open when we're um when we have other mentors to speak into our life and so you know it kind of reminds me of 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 what I was saying about Paul and Timothy you know Timothy had a he had an intimidation problem, right? Mm -hmm. And then Paul was spoken to his life. Timothy, fan into flames. Timothy, fan into flames. Timothy, watch that blind spot. Timothy, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. And and we need Pauls. We need those fathers mm -hmm. that will speak into our lives. And and those of us that are that are like, you know what? I don't need nobody. I'm gonna just go and and God's gonna use me. Yes, God will use you. But how far will you go? Will you be another statistic? Will you be another that? Um, yes, God used him mightily, but what happened you know so there's safety in covering there's safety in the home group in the life group in the church under leadership under mentorship there's safety why do you want to be on your own why do you want to be undependent when you can be dependent god didn't make us islands mm -hmm. he made us to be in community that we would watch each other's back that that all of us would make it. <laughs> yeah. Look at Samson. Look at Samson in his in he had such a mighty gift on, on his life, the power of God. But 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 if if he would have just submitted himself maybe to somebody else that said, hey, mm. don't don't uh do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Maybe his ending wouldn't be like that. And so uh, I want to encourage every single one that wants to be used by God, go under covering. That's the mm -hmm. safest place to be. Go under covering. You need that because sometimes you might not see your blind spots and we need somebody to see, to speak into us. We need Pauls in, in our life that will Lord. take us to another, but also will speak not what we sometimes like to hear, but what we need to hear.
that's so good that's so good Ivan I really appreciate your guys' answers I think that um, it's important to not rejoice when demons come out when mm. people's words that we give are accurate but Jesus says rejoice that your name is written in the book of life yes uh, yes you may say so what benefit do we have walking in holiness and righteousness if we can still be used of God in gifts well there's um, the danger of operating in the gifts and not living a holy life is twofold one danger is that it grieves the Holy Spirit and so while you can use the gift, you're actually not developing a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. And when, his, when He is grieved, the purity, the, His power, His precious anointing will be decreased until He will even lift it. Now the anointing in you will stay there. The anointing upon you will drip. You can, so you'll operate out of the gifting but you won't be moving in that anointing and there is a difference in that. There's a sense of purity. There's a sense of passion yeah, yeah. that people get when they receive that. And that's why sometimes you can go to a meeting and I always say that in my personal, that's my personal opinion, the difference between the gift and the anointing is the gift touches me, changes me, but the anointing causes me to want Jesus more than I wanted it before. And mm. there's a purity about come that on, anointing. So and so good. when you walk in sin, when you compromise, when you neglect your private walk with the Lord, you will not carry that anointing, even if you will still operate in the gift. But the second problem is that you will become extremely vulnerable to demonic attack. And publicly, you will hold that title or you will actually move. Privately, you will be tormented and harassed beyond imagination like in the way that you would wish to die actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. It happened to yeah. King Saul. Mm -hmm. Privately he was under such a harassment but publicly he was tall and handsome and entitled and, and so and that's one of the reasons why to me I don't take comfort in just how well I can be used publicly. If I neglect my private life with God I know one thing is I grieve the precious Holy Spirit and I become a target because all these demons that I've attacked through the power of the Holy Spirit, now they're like, okay, finally Vlad has no protection because he's not walking with God. And so, and now I can become harassed and come under such a heavy attack privately by demons. And just because you're gifted, it doesn't mean you're protected. Your purity is your protection, your righteousness, your holiness. That's why the breastplate is righteousness. You know, the helmet is salvation. It's our relationship with God. It's not just the doctrine of I have a gift of righteousness. It's actually walking that out every single day. This doesn't yes, talk about, yes. righteousness oh. is not perfection. Righteousness is that I am in right standing. I am living, my heart is pure before God. I'm walking, if I've done something wrong, I quick to repent and I walk in that protection both under my authority and both under the covering of the Holy Spirit. And so, yeah. so though you cannot lose the gift, you can lose it by not practicing that gift. And like mm -hmm. Samson, you can keep on doing something under the, in, and under the power of God. But sooner or later, even that, um, if you don't change, if you don't um, repent of your sin, you will be found out. Uh, things will mm -hmm. surface and you will contaminate not only the gift, um, you will contaminate people that you're ministering and it's going to help nobody. Sometimes those people end up hurting more people than actually mm -hmm. uh, helping more people. Now mm -hmm. I want to bring this uh, to an end and I want to ask a last question. Um, is it possible to over overemphasize or abuse spiritual gifts. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, for me personally, what I've what I've seen uh, throughout my life, looking at different ministries, looking at how they operate, I absolutely think that you can. Um, I think that. Many ministries, it's it's it kind of flows into the same thing, uh, where you know you rejoice that demons obey you or whatever, and and you begin to glorify the gift when the person that holds the gifts begins to get to worshipped, to glorified, rather than the giver of the gift. Mm. That person can get uh, something that is called, I 
think a God complex where, mm. where you basically begin to think that, well, God has bestowed this great gift on me so I can use it however I see fit. One of the very common things, and I know this is controversial topics, you know, where, where people say that like, oh, because of the gift upon me, you have offended me. So you're under a curse now. You're, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be doomed. You're going to be this. And I know that in some certain situations, definitely a minister of God can be called by God to, to utter some such pronunciations. But many times you think because of that gift, you can kind of do whatever you want and begin to misbehave under the guise and under the protection of that gift. And I think it's, it's, it is a great danger. Uh, I think as, as uh, ministers of God, as people who are, are walking the walk with Jesus Christ, uh, the moment that you l forget the reason for the gift, the moment that you forget that, and the Bible is very clear, the people were given apostles and pastors, and the purpose was to edify the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if the body of Christ is not benefiting from your gift, but rather it benefits you instead as a minister, it glorifies you, mm. it brings you, uh, you know, the, 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 the wealth of this world, or the, it brings you this, it, it, it brings you this, you benefit from this, you're, uh, uh, then I think that you're in danger. I think you're in danger once again. It's, it's, it's part of what Jesus said in Matthew 7. You can practice, you can do these things and, and, and abuse that spiritual gift and hurt people. But at the end of the day, we will all be held responsible in eternity. So, so that's my view of it, at least. Yeah, um, I, uh, I teach in a prophetic class about uh, prophets false prophets true prophets and we added this uh with me and bryson we added this is a third category uh, of a carnal prophet and i believe it applies to not just prophets but the ministers uh, as a whole um mm -hmm. that a, a true prophet is the one that uh, is not the one that prophesies true and things come to pass true prophets sometimes they could even get things wrong but what distinguishes and uh, what makes up a a a, a a true prophet is is that he points he builds God's kingdom and he points to Jesus mm -hmm. so he's using the spiritual gifts the anointing that's mm -hmm. on his life the grace that uh, in his life the faith the minister uses that to build God's kingdom to mm -hmm. build the church that's and true. to point to Jesus mm -hmm. it's to point to Jesus uh, the false prophet on the other uh, uh, on the other side and or, or a false minister is the one that points away to Jesus, uh, false doctrine, and builds the demonic kingdom. But there's there's this gray area where many people, sometimes um, uh, ministers fall into is the carnality, the carnal prophet, the carnal minister, is the ones that uses the gifts of uh, gifts of God to build their kingdom, to build mm -hmm. their clique, to build their fan base, mm -hmm. and they point it to themselves by using the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. using the gifts, um, and... Um, it's important that as, 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 as ministers and as Christians as a whole that we use everything that God gives us to point to Jesus, to build the local church, and to build God's kingdom. Now, uh, a, 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 a minister, a prophet could fall into the carnality, but we, it's important that there's somebody that helps them out of it or they, they, they repent and become the true minister. So, of course, he has the gifts of God. Uh, could be abused, uh, gifts of God could be used, because the gifts of God are tools, really, could be used to point to themselves, to build their own kingdom, to build their own uh, ministries, to build their own cliques, instead of uh, building the kingdom of God, building a local church, building the universal church. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes I, I, I find that ministers, uh, especially that move in a great gifting and anointing, they go against the universal body of Christ. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Say that. Say that. They Say that. judge uh, this movement, that movement. Mm -hmm. They, they. Mm. It's as if their wow. church and their anybody that follows them is the only true believers and the only living church in the world. And they're using their position, their gifting, and their anointing to destroy the body of Christ, the universal body of Christ. Um, and that's not right. That's that's carnality. That's immaturity. That's not uh, they, they fall into that gray zone, which is a dangerous zone where 
where God, uh, that when Jesus, uh, when they face him uh, in, in, uh, before the white throne, they will give an account for that. So mm-hmm. we as ministers, we always got to be uh, watchful and make sure that we don't build our own clique, our own uh, kingdom, that we build uh, Jesus's bride. We edify mm-hmm. Jesus's bride. We build God's kingdom, uh, Jesus's kingdom. And we always point to Jesus. We never take the credit. We never take that 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 we don't become the stars, but we we point to to uh, to Jesus and Him only. That's so good, Ivan. Do you have anything? Yeah, I love this. I agree with what Pastor Ilya, Pastor Rickard is saying. Well, something I'll add to it. I love the scripture in the Bible, First Peter four ten. It says, "Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms." What, what the Bible says is that we are stewards of the mm-hmm. gift and um, we are stewards. And so we can, we can abuse it. We can, um, we can do whatever we want to do with it, but we will have to give an account to the Lord. And we need to be very careful because what God entrusted us, he's mm-hmm. going to ask us what we did with it. And uh, one thing I want to give to everyone that is watching, something that w- will help calibrate your heart to get your heart in the right place is this is what helps me. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, the Beatitudes. That, that helps calibrate my heart. When I feel like in my heart, I feel like my heart is not in the right place. A good place to go in Scripture is Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter mm-hmm. 7. Those are the words of Jesus. And actually, Jesus said, if you build your life on those words, His words, and there's a lot over there. I mean, it will hit different areas of your life. If you're if you're going in this direction, oh man, Jesus will bring you back if you will heed His voice. And, and He promises that the storms and the winds will come. But if you build on His sayings, on His word, Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7 will help calibrate your heart back Mm -hmm. to the heart of God and so God gives us scripture to anchor ourselves to anchor our hearts because our hearts will will try to you know the only problem with the living sacrifice that it wants to come off the altar that's the only one of the only problems and so (laughs) this is what helps me Matthew chapter 5 chapter 6 is that I go back and I'm a God what is it in my heart? Let's let's work on this. Let's get back to your heart because mm-hmm. because uh, I want to be a good steward. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to go you know to the left or to the right. And so uh, I encourage you also you know uh, anchor yourself, anchor yourself. Amen, 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 amen. Well, guys, we have been for an hour and fifty two minutes live, so we're going to bring this to an end. Before we do that. Um, I want you guys to, those of you watching, don't forget to hit thumbs up right now on YouTube, on Facebook, share this. We're going to be right now wrapping this up. Uh, Before we do that, I want to ask our guys to share a little bit more about um, the times that you guys are streaming and what should people, what can people expect um, by joining um, your um, uh, streams and when you're streaming, what's happening with the ministries. We're all part of Hungry Gen, but they also have YouTube channels. So if you can go ahead and share that. And if I can ask my team to add their um, user links in the video on the on the homepage right now so that people can just click straight from the title on it. But if you guys could kind of share a little bit about when you're streaming, where people can find you and what kind of a ministry can they expect. Ilya, if you can start from you, then Rickard, then Ivan. Thank you, Pastor Vlad. I really appreciate giving us uh, time and exposure. Um, I minister uh, on Wednesdays, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, every Wednesday. And uh, what you can expect is that uh, you, you expect the, 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 the preaching, and um, I usually about uh, preach the word, encourage the body of Christ, encourage people, and um, and then I go into ministry. I, I have a Zoom uh, usually open, and uh, as well as Facebook and uh, YouTube, and then we go into for about an hour, an hour twenty minutes, and I minister, uh, release prophetic words, release word of knowledge, uh, and whatever Holy Spirit, uh, whatever Holy Spirit reads. Pray for pray for healing. It almost seems like after every prophecy, I pray for deliverance. But uh, we are a deliverance church, so that's uh, 
that's kind of what we are. Um, and uh, and so uh, on, on Wednesdays, it's a it's a prophetic slash deliverance slash healing service. But whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do, I, I yield to him and, and I minister. But a kind of focus of of the stream is more on on a prophetic, in a sense, ministering prophetic and just to speak the mind of God, the will of God into your life and to help to bring practical solution into the lives of people, be it in their business, be it in their career, be it in their relationship, in their health, whatever it is, just to minister the Spirit of God leads. So it's every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Timing. So uh, if you have that day available, come and join, receive from the Lord. And if the Lord has something for you, uh, I'll be releasing it and ministering to you in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. So um, guys, if you, if you want to grow, in the prophetic i want to challenge you in fact let's do that right now those of you that are we have quite few of you online and so um could you help me out right now and just go to um, youtube and subscribe to pastor Ilya's um youtube channel and so it's in the chat right now just hit subscribe and let, let's help him to um to break um a thousand tonight and so um, that he can start growing in that. Um, he has been with me um, since the beginning. Well, well, in the beginning it was more of like I was with him. And so now I say that he was with me. But in reality, so it's only it's been 20 years now um, that he's pretty much helped me to launch with so much stuff. Everything at Hungry Gen that you see media wise. And so um, he's humble man. He doesn't seek anything for himself. Doesn't. It's not trying to be internet, internet uh, famous or known. He really has a gift from God, and he's he's ministering. And so, I just want us to uh, support this man, and I really believe that God's going to use him powerfully to impact the world. And he has a very strong, strong prophetic grace and anointing on his life. So go ahead and just subscribe right now. Let's break a thousand subscribers for him um, tonight. And then uh, Pastor Rickard, you're no stranger to pretty much nobody here, but tell us a little bit more about what people can expect, some of the changes about digital deliverance and your live streaming. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm over at the Deliverance Podcast right here on YouTube. We just broke 20,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, Pastor Vlad, for Ooh, all the call outs on. and shout outs. I really appreciate it. I stream on Saturdays, 10 a.m. in the morning Pacific Standard Time so that my people in Europe can watch as well uh, in the night time. Uh, for, for those of you who are involved, digital deliverances are coming back to Saturday mornings again. So we shall be ministering digital deliverance. Uh, on Saturdays once again so that people in Europe and Africa and other parts of the world who were waking up in the middle of the night to, to receive prayer, you can now tune in at a more comfortable time. Next year, we're also going to start a deliverance community where uh, people who are uh, maybe in the ministry or desiring to be in the ministry and you want to learn more about how why, when, where, and what you do during the Ministry of Deliverance. I'm going to be teaching. It's going to be a private uh, community. More details will be launched at the beginning of next year. So keep your eyes out. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited for the Deliverance Revival that is happening. And uh, I believe that, you know, uh, get connected so that you can uh, uh, learn and tap into that as well. Maybe you're missing some area in your ministry or you want to know what the first step is. That's going to be it for you. So more details for that will come in the beginning of next year. Yeah, make sure you guys follow. Rickard is streaming every Saturday. He's been doing this faithfully. Um, he has a lot to share uh, from his experience in Skowen. Um, he has a lot to share from his experience at Hungry Gen and digital deliverance is removing to Saturday. It, you won't regret. And so um, if you haven't subscribed to Pastor Ilya, make sure you just hit subscribe. And then our newest member, um, Ivan. Ivan, tell us a little bit more about, and you actually, you're starting this Friday uh, live streaming. And so this is going to be incredible. I'm dropping Ivan's uh, YouTube channel. But Ivan, tell us a little bit more about um, your ministry and what's going to be happening. Yes. Uh, thank you, Pastor Vlad, for this opportunity and honor. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of the, those that went before us. And so I want to honor you, Pastor Vlad, and thank you for, for, for everything. Uh, Friday Fire is every Friday at 6, 6 p.m. PST. And something that we're going to be going after is uh, 
I am an evangelist in heart. And uh, we're going to be praying for people to see the lost saved, uh, praying for healing, uh, deliverance, salvation, and uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you know somebody that needs Jesus, Friday fire, you know, let them let them encounter encounter God. You know, something that really affected my uh, tra trajectory of my relationship with God was an encounter with God. Mm -hmm. At 16, 17, 18, I, I had an encounter with God. And because of that encounter, I started pursuing God with all my heart. And so, so healing, um, one of the graces that God graced me is in the area of healing. I am still uh, mining in that grace. I, I'm, I don't know it all, but God showed, God helped me with a little bit. What well, That little bit I will, I'm willing to share and so that 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 is also what's going to happen. So salvation, healing, deliverance, because we're a deliverance church and mm -hmm. baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. So guys, um, I see that um, Ilya already broke 700 um, subscribers. So let's before this uh, week is over, let's help him to break a thousand. Same thing with Ivan. Uh, over 600 now let's help him to also break 700 and then Rickard he, he's good at 20k he just broke another 100 uh, subscribers so <laughs> but the Lord is blessing these guys and it's my joy to be uh, their pastor and it's my joy also to see that they flourish because guys I'm going to tell you one thing um, they really are used by the Lord uh, to bring healing deliverance and prophecy to the world and so just subscribe to them all when they are on stream make sure you jump in and just shut them down and then really encourage them um, I'm also gonna sow tonight into their ministries they're my brothers and um, they're also part of my team but I believe in the grace of God in their life and so I want to invite you those of you that are watching if this stream was a blessing to you uh, I want you to um, just take a moment right now and um, sow your seed so that we can bless them as well. Whatever you sow, um, we will. I will still uh, bless uh, these men of God. And um, but you can help to do that because I believe that you grow where you sow, uh, where you sow your time, where you sow your finances, where you sow your attention, your affection. And so uh, we're dropping the giving links right now. They're actually on all the platforms. You can just click on them. You can sow directly into their ministries. It will be a great blessing. I can tell you one thing is Hungry Gen is a good soil. The ministers at Hungry Gen are a great soil and God's going to use that seed to help us spread the message of Jesus and then God will in return strengthen your faith and bless you in Jesus name. Amen. We offer all of our books free of charge. All of my e-courses are free of charge. In fact, I, as I was streaming, I just got my paper back physical copy. Um, there's a hardcover and you can download that today free of charge on the website and so we do all of that because of your generosity and because of your giving. So everybody that's giving part of our regular stream, I just I want to say thank you. Uh, you guys are so generous. You guys are so great and so just really really appreciate you. Uh, these guys also appreciate you as well and so um, make sure that you follow, make sure you subscribe uh, tonight for them. But guys just want to say thank you um, Ivan, Rickard and Ilya for jumping on and um, I think we should do this more often and maybe target different topics. How many of you guys enjoy this? If you enjoy this let me know in the comments um, and uh, if I see you in the comments saying yes then we will do it again very soon. If I don't see that in the comments uh, we're gonna have to pray about it uh, and stuff. So <laughs> we, we, we love these guys. Amen. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much and uh, I'll text you after the chat.